Welcome to Gap, Great Book, Snow Falling on Cedar. Uh, this is a really interesting moment because this is the first time ever we're going to have a class not only here at the high school but also at home with the viewers at home who are choosing to participate at, or listen in or participate using Twitter and we'll talk more about that. But uh, welcome everybody. And uh, we'll just get right to it. What this is, it's a collaboration between, among the Gosstown Adult Education Program, Gosstown Television, or GTV, and the SAU 19 Technology Department. We all got together and uh, thought that this would be a good idea to kind of expand and get things out, not just here in the school, but into the community. Um, a little bit about myself. Some of you, I recognize a lot of familiar faces. Um, my name is Pete Galamaga. I've been teaching for about 21, 22 years. This is my 11th or 12th year at Gosstown High School. Um, spent most of that time teaching uh, high school English, predominantly 9th and 10th graders. Uh, now I also do that. I work on VLAX and English and study skills over with the uh, the alternative ed program. I teach study skills, English here at the Gap, and SAT prep at the Gap. So I like to do a lot of different things. Um, okay, so let's talk about the structure of the course. Um, this is, it's pretty tightly packed. We're only going to have eight sessions uh, of class, eight one hour sessions. Well, let me take seven one hour sessions, and today, is going to be a half hour session, an introduction. What we'll do is we'll go through the syllabus, um, a little bit about class procedure, due dates, um, and how what, what you're expected to do with the assignments over the week between classes. Um, so let's get right to that. By the way, there are a couple things, and you'll see this some of this on the document. One is um, if you want to email me or uh, just connect with the course, there's a couple ways you can do that. One is through gapgreatbooks at sau19.com, and that's on the handouts. So that's gapgreatbooks at sau19.com. We also have a Twitter handle. I'm, I'm you know... I'm not big on Twitter, I'm not a big Twitter user, but we're going to be using it to maybe connect with folks at home during the live broadcast. And the Twitter handle is simple, it's at Gap Great Books. And so I'll check that periodically, and if people have questions or comments or whatever they want to throw into the discussion, we'll be able to check in with folks at home as well. So that's um, the second method of communication. Thirdly, I have a very small website set up. Um, it's called, it's the, the address is galamaga.weebly.com. I don't know if you've ever seen a Weebly website, W-E-E-B-L-Y. And uh, that should be, you should be seeing that probably on the screen at home. But galamaga.weebly.com, and you can download these documents that I'm holding right here. So if you misplace them or folks at home want to download their own copy, that's all they have to do is go to that website. And if there are problems with that, again, just use the email address. Any questions so far? We're doing great. Awesome. Okay. So I want to look at first the syllabus, which is this document here. Okay. As you can see, 
we're pretty tightly packed and we're going to have to do a lot of reading um, in between class meetings. This is going to be different from what you've experienced probably with other GAP classes where we do a lot of the work in class. However, that's the bad news, I guess. I don't want to say bad news, reading's bad news, but it's the not so awesome news. But the awesome news is these are a couple really cool books. Uh, I think you're really going to like them. Uh, one of them, and you'll, there are probably, you can see them on the screen there. One of them is uh, Snow Falling on Cedars, and it is an award-winning book that was also made into an award-winning movie. Um, really interesting. One of those books that you, it's, you, you finish the chapter and you go, uh, one more chapter, one more chapter. I'm just going to read one more chapter. There's a lot of mystery, a lot of suspense, um, and... So you're always wondering what's going to happen next. One of the things I liked best about this book was that I couldn't predict what was going to happen. You know when you watch a TV show and the 10 minutes in, you're like, oh, I know what happened. These two, this is the killer, and these two are going to fall in love at the end. You know, you can tell right away. This doesn't happen in this book. You really don't know how it's going to turn out, and it's pretty cool that way. So there's that book. The other book is how to read literature like a professor. And it's, really, it's, it's a not a dry, boring textbook. It's a professor who's trying to speak, um, ironically enough, English to people. About, you know, you'll have the teacher say, well, the cow symbolizes energy and the moon symbolizes birth. And you're sitting there thinking, how, how did you come up with that? Did, did you just... But the truth is that... There, are, is re, there is reasoning behind that, and what he really does well in that book is explain how that's done. And I think it'll be cool to be reading both books kind of at the same time, and it'll give us stuff to talk about in between classes. And speaking of talk about, that is the key to this class. I can't emphasize enough. We really need class participation. Otherwise... I hate to threaten you like this, but otherwise you will have to listen to me talking to you for a full hour. Now, now my mom would love that. My mom is my, you know, my biggest fan, but my brother would not. So I want to mix it up. I want to get what you guys think. I already know what I think. I want to know what you think, what your observations are from this book. I, what I love about teaching classes like this is you guys teach me stuff. You guys give me a different angle. And hoping people watching as well will have some uh, insights of their own. But we need participation. So let's go straight to the assignments. Um, what you'll see on the left will be the date of the class meeting and what we're going to do in that class meeting. Um, I've given us the first three of topics. I'm going to see how things progress before I start getting more specific into the weeks four, five, and six. But basically, that's what we're going to be using to frame our discussions on the left-hand side. On the right-hand side are the chapter reading assignments. Okay. Here is, again, maybe some good news. This is going, you're really in to be treated like college students because there's not a quiz every time you come in. Okay. In college, when you come to a college class, the assumption is that you've just done the reading. The professor doesn't go around the room and said, you know, what color was the lady's shoe in chapter three? You know, it's not, it's just not going to happen. So I'm going to assume that you've done the reading and that we can just start talking right away. Okay? And how you do that, we can talk a little bit more about in a bit. So the first one is the chapters one through four of Snow Falling on Cedars. And then that's what SFOC, by the way, my clever. And then, how to read literature, HTRL. I really went out on a limb on that one. And that's preface, introduction, and chapter one. Okay? And to help with that, I gave you these, these packets. And again, these are downloadable off of galamaga.weebly.com. And I got these from the Kalamazoo Public Library System. Um, I don't long story of how that happened. 
But basically what you can do is look at those questions as kind of a guide at, regarding what we could start talking about. That's not to say you can't come in here with like, saying, I want to talk about this, and it's not on here. But for those people who are kind of like, I don't know where to even, what to even look for. Well, here are some things that I think would be good areas to explore. I am not going to collect question sheets or anything like that, okay? Again, college, college level. I'm going to treat you like adults. Just assume that you've done the reading, you've been th doing the thinking, okay? So that's what we're going to use for the discussion questions. While reading, though, there is something, and those of you who haven't before know that I talk about something called active reading, which, does anybody remember what active reading is? Well, it's reading while you're active. I don't want to jump around too much and my mic might explode. But active reading means you're doing something. And what I would recommend is just having a notebook nearby while you're reading and just jot down anything that comes to mind. Okay, this is really depressing, or how could he have killed that person, or whatever. Whatever comes to mind, and then you come to class and you've got something to go by. Okay, active reading, it's a little more complicated than that, but it, in essence, doing something while you're reading will help you focus more and retain more of what you've read. That's just science. It's been like that forever. So as you'll see, we have two papers, and we'll talk more about that. The first paper is due on March 10th, which is uh, one, two, three, four, a month from now. Okay, we'll talk about that in a little bit. And then the last one is due on the final day of class, which is on the back of the page um, on the 7th of April. And of course, all this assumes we don't have snow days or anything of that nature, because but right, we have, we've had no snow, so nothing to worry about, right? Yeah, okay, let's just hope no snow. Um, so that's the list of due dates. If you go to the next sheet here, and what you'll see is the grading policy for this course. It's very broad, okay? But what is clearly the essence of the course? Participation, talking, conversation, okay? We should all have a big mug of coffee when we come in here and just chat, okay? But that's the kind, of, that's really what I like, just talking about books and really getting excited about it and finding out what does this have to do with me? What does this tell me about my life? I'm getting ahead of myself, but conversation, okay? Don't think of this as, oh my God, I got to get this grade. I'm not going to get credit. I mean, have fun. Try to, that's really, I'm getting ahead of myself again. But having fun is really what I'm out for, okay? Having a positive experience. So participation, 60%, okay, of the grade. Okay, I think with this size group, that's pretty, I think we can do that. The papers are 20% each, okay? Now, when you use a word like paper, going back to as, like, as far back in my academic career, those are, that's an ominous word, I think, paper. Okay, what does that mean? Well, let's take a look. Um, what I'd like you to do once you, after you've read about, I'd say, the first reading assignment or so, is to choose a character that ca captures your interest. Just choose one. And there are definitely some interesting characters in this book, okay? And then I want you to explain to me what it is that draws you to that character. So this is, what type of essay would you call this? Is this a formal essay? It's more personal, okay? It's more of a personal essay because you're going to be connecting yourself. You're, you're going to be part of this paper. You're going to be explaining, this character captured my interest for the following reasons. And then uh, just try to give me some examples about 
says in here, what did the author do to make this character special to you? Use examples from the novel and feel free to make personal connections to the story as well. And specifics, everybody wants to know how long, two to four typed MLA double spaced pages. Now, the folks in front of me, when I say that, you guys know what that means, okay, right? Folks at home, double spaced, if you're going to be writing the paper as well, double spaced MLA, let's just keep it simple with a double spaced two to four type pages if that's something that you're interested in doing and looking for credit. Um, how's it going to be graded? I want this to be an enjoyable assignment. I want you to have fun with this. I want you, again, not to be saying, oh my God, am I saying what he wants me to hear? Don't get wrapped up in trying to write something that you think will impress me. Okay? Don't do that. Okay? This is something you're writing in, in a lot of ways for yourself. Write something that shows that you've read carefully, that you've made an effort to make a connection to the novel, that you invested time and thought in what you've written and didn't just throw something together at the last minute, okay? Um, that you read carefully is pretty, it should be pretty obvious, but it happens sometimes. People will say, snow falling on cedars. Um, yeah, it was about a snowstorm and um, this guy was near the cedar and, okay, did not read carefully, okay? Um, you've made an effort to make a connection to the novel. This guy saw another guy, and they did stuff in this place. I don't think, it doesn't sound very invested, okay? And then there are the papers that you can just tell, just scream, I just did this 30 minutes ago. I just hit print. I hope it makes sense in English, okay? Those are just the three things that I just ask not to happen. I just want you to put a little time and effort, and you've got about a month or so, about a month to do it including the, um, over the uh, break, because we're not going to meet for two weeks later on this month because of the February break. So you've got a lot of time, and two to four pages is really brief. And if you want to do more than four pages, fine. But don't do more than 400, because I, I just have to have a life at some point. Okay, we all do. All right? Okay, so if you do those things, you're going to be just fine, okay? Does any questions so far on that account? No. Of course, I'm happy to help. Maybe even too happy, scary happy, because I love this kind of thing, okay? For those of you who are in the school, I'm available here just about every day um, after school, and I work in the homework then on Monday and Wednesdays after school. Um, for those of you who aren't in, uh, in the area or for folks at home, uh, email, you know, send me a draft or send me your thoughts, you know, send them on Twitter. Uh, we are in discussions, by the way, to possibly even set up a blog. I'm, for, that's a maybe at this point. You know, we'll, if we can get the technology in place by next class, that would be fun. We could do that. But um, that's really it with that. So, do you have any questions at this up to this point? Nothing. Questions, concerns. There, there will be another paper. I'm not going to give that assignment to you just yet. I don't want you to be thinking about it, worrying about it. But it's going to be a, along the same lines, maybe a couple, a page or two longer, maybe. But that's it. So those are the three grades that are going to go with the course. Okay. Right. Now, I have a just a question about... Um, the book. Has anyone here read the book before? Okay. Has anyone here seen the movie? Oh, awesome. No, this is good. I was afraid that somebody would have read or uh, seen the movie because the other thing I want to, because this happens sometimes with books, is um, I don't want to discourage people from reading. I can't say, you're not allowed to read chapter six. You shall not pass, okay? But if you want to get ahead, that's okay. But remember, I'm going to speak as if we're here. You know, you know what I'm saying? I'm, we're in a certain place, okay? I'm not going, 
because we're going to deal a little bit with foreshadowing and things like that. So if I say, hmm, well, the blood on his hand, what could, have, what could this mean? And you'll be like, oh, well, that's because he killed his mother. And everybody's like, no, don't do that. Just try to, if you can, try to, you know, with, restrain yourself a little bit so we don't give away too much of the fun stuff at the end, okay? Um, but no, that's, it's actually kind of fun, and I'm excited that, um, in a weird way, that nobody's read or seen the movie yet. Um, I haven't seen the movie yet. I bought it, and I haven't had a chance to see it. I've heard mixed things. I've heard it was good, but people, English nerds like myself, we always, we want the book to be the best. All right. All right. All right. I think just to um, close out our opening um, remarks, I want to look at the, the page one for just a second. Well, not a second, actually a couple minutes. I've been told by a lot of people whom I respect and a lot of great teachers that that first sentence of a book is really important. Okay. When I had a music teacher and I used to learn, I was playing trombone, which by the way I do weddings and birthday parties if anyone wants me to come by, but he's taught me that uh, music when you were playing music, make sure you started really well and ended really memorably, you know. So I think it's important with a novel sometimes that you want a really nice start. And I love this, this first sentence. There's so much in this sentence. And uh, I'm going to read it now. The accused man, Kabuo Miyamoto, sat proudly upright with, with a rigid grace. His palms placed softly on the defendant's table. The posture of a man who has detached himself insofar as this is, as this is possible at his own trial. Okay. What I love about good opening sentences, or good sentences in general, is that they're really meaty. There's lots of good stuff in there. Okay. That's not to put down Hemingway and Steinbeck, who like really short. I don't know if you read Mice and Men. Or, you know, really, that's, that's a good style too. They've got their own meat. But they're more lean. I like the big beefy stuff dripping with fat. Everybody's hungry right now. Okay. So in this first sentence, what are some things that we learned? Right, okay. We we know that Miyamoto is being accused of something and he's there he is in a trial. There's a trial. What else? Do we learn anything about him? Just in that one sentence. Yes. Yeah, he, and what, when you, yes, he's detached himself from whatever he did. What would that say to you about what he's being accused of? What do you think? It was something bad. Interesting. Yeah. Wow. Mm. Yeah. I like that. But you do you feel from this first sentence that he did he do this, do you think? Just from this first sentence? You think he did it? Ooh, you think. But how is he sitting? Proudly. He's and and ri like rigid, those two words are so you don't see together. Rigid grace. It's like, you know, sloppily classy. I don't know, you know, it seems just interesting. But he is sitting there, pr I like proudly rigid grace. So he's sitting there, because if you think of a, a lot, if you imagine somebody sitting a, a, in a trial, I've seen some of those things on TV and they're kind of slumped down and their heads are hanging. 
but he's not. He's sitting up there, but again, he's kind of, like you said, he's kind of detached himself. Okay? So, we've learned a couple things. We've learned, we've got a setting, which is a what? What's the setting here? A courtroom. We've got a character who is, if somebody's sitting proudly with rigid grace at their own, at a trial, <coughs> what do you, what kind of person is that? If you think. Nervous? No. Weak? Confident? Cocky, maybe? Punk? That, oh, yeah, see, there's, you guys are going to like this book. I know. See, but see what we got out of one sentence? Love this stuff. So, we're going to find out why he's there and why he's sitting the way he is. And we'll find out if he did anything. Okay? So stay tuned, and we will wrap up this, this uh, TV part, and then the rest of us will continue on as we move forward. Thank you. Thank you.